so today I'm going to do another one of my collage influences and in this occasion it's going to be uh, a collection of work by somebody uh, one of the uh, uh, members of the Dada group this is I believe is in Cologne Dada and somebody's not really associated with collage too much but um, this is uh, uh, I thought the this book is uh, such a fantastic and really unique way of uh, doing things and um and of uh, the fact there are so many of them uh of this particular kind of illustration is is amazing in itself and this is the, not the only book this collection of these um um the, uh, the uh is max Ernst was mostly associated with the surreal surrealism movement but he, like i said he was in the clone that group and so he over a period of time and let's see what it is when he made these it first appeared in 1930 this one uh, appeared in 19 first appeared in 1934 in a series of five pamphlets of fewer than 1000 copies each and has never been printed before this um and basically he had uh, basically used exclusively pretty much exclusively um victorian uh, old um from old catalogue and pulp novel illustrations and Victorian engravings and so forth. So, um, and it's like a surreal, and it's supposed to tell some kind of surrealist tale through the uh, through the collages itself. So this is mostly going to be about this book. Um, and it occurred to me that um, recently when I got it that um, around the time when people like Winston Smith and Warren, certainly when I was getting into doing this uh, over a decade later. Um, he um, well, nearly twenty years later, even he um, the the time difference between so because I was I if I could have I would have got some of these material from the nineteen sixties and fifties like he did and Winston Smith did and the time difference between the time the artwork is being made and the time when that kind of illustration was produced is actually pretty similar, so that's uh, something to think of, but. This one here, and this one is called Un, Un Semaine de Bont, uh, Bonte, and I can't remember what it's French for. Um, and this, um, I mean, the, the artwork in itself is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it's certainly something just really bizarre and unique. I mean, you go, the only per the person that this brings to mind that this is almost kind of similar like is uh, someone I've spoken about before, Freddie Bear. Because um, she, because just because of the type of artwork being used um, for it, and since it's all of the same type, that um, the um, it doesn't take out take it out too much. Um, they, you know, it looks it looks it almost adds to the more surrealist surrealist aspect of it as opposed to. Um, in a way, uh, or more, more believable surrealism, I should say, um, where it's a bit more in, uh, where the weirdness is a bit more integrated. And you have some things uh, like a running turn, like this lion face guy seems to come through. And it's just the composition is absolutely amazing. And it's just the, uh, it's just uh, as as I said, he is he was more more, in, more known for his work with the surrealist. Um, movement i believe and um this is just great artwork i mean i can i can sometimes look through this and see if i can i want to do this kind of thing um and he's uh it's separated into books obviously so things like this i would probably do just do uh start to do digitally because i don't have this kind of material unless i was to actually just collect this get images i could i could print them out and cut and cut them out if i wouldn't so wanted to but it would be interesting to make more like this because there is a certain aesthetic to and i have done some that are a bit like this um like a piece called i did called creation where i had like a woman and i a picture of a woman i'd given her a third eye and i'd put skulls in her hair um that kind of thing and some other bits um, but this is all 
I just like the whole the whole weird. I mean, the uh, the, the fact that uh, it's these kind of images in, in the first place. Uh, you're already starting off with all from from this generation's perspective, from our perspective of this time, a bit weird, odd anyway. But to add these and um, to collage them in with each other like this just just tweaks the weirdness of it. This is the thing. This is why nothing jumps out that really shouldn't be there. But as if but these are things that shouldn't be there. But so it's it, it's um, a lot more subtle. And there's um, a great deal of gothic melancholy going on um, with the weirdness, uh, with the, the surrealism. Um, well, um, really because of, you know, the era of what they came from. Um, and these are fantastic. Uh, just keep on saying it because it's just out great. So the, the impact that they must have made at this time, the time that these came out, there would have been nothing like this, even from after, you know post Dada and you know early surrealism. This is this is something that was totally unique, and there's a lot more interest in this kind of thing now, because a lot of these people would buy prints of these and put them on the wall easily. So. That's uh, something to think of in the fact that I, I've i made pieces of lightweight like this so, and that are available as prints. So, I mean, it also just hasn't, it also has, you know, because of the lighting of some of these, well, not these ones that I've come to now, but some of the early ones, it has an added darkness to it, like especially like this. And, um... These are great. This is like what you more expect of like more traditional surrealism. This isn't so much the Victorian type pictures, but this is what you get from his uh, more from his surrealist work. Again, this is just fantastic. Freddie Bear, Freddie Bear before Freddie Bear, basically, but hers usually has a bit more of a feminist slant to it. Um, so this doesn't. This certainly does not. So, I mean, you could you could spend ages just going over these over and over and over again. This is a fantastic book, um, and it'd be interesting to get some of the other one collections that have been printed. So, always, always look up more of Max Ernst's work because he did he did a hell of a lot for um, uh, to further artwork and uh, make it a lot more interesting. Uh, as I say, I'm not very as good at describing things. This is why I do visual artwork because I'm not as good as as good at using using words. I know what I mean, and it's hard for me to express it verbally. Um, and so things like this, um, this is why I do things like this basically. And this is why some things like this are such an influence on me because um, it's just the just also, also just how they're structured. I mean, is um, it's just um, just to add the uh, the insanity to uh, to what should what should ordinarily be a basic static image of like a bedroom. Yeah, so you've got a daily daily use in it. This is the kind of thing I would do just to add just to uh, just to to uh, make things more unsettling and to um, discomfort the comfortable, I should say. And uh, and challenge people, even if it's not really saying anything, just um, just uh, just uh, people to go, oh, it's, that looks damn weird. Um, sometimes I just uh, feel like uh, that's a victory in itself. So let me know what you think, whether you like this book, um, whether you liked his work, how much you know about Max Ernst, and I shall uh, like, share, and sub of course, like, share, and subscribe, um, and um. And the my the description as my uh, link to for my merch links and my socials. Uh, check out some of my other influence videos, and I shall speak to you soon. Thank you.